party wagon and hold on to your pizza. Good morning, Turtle fans. This is Justin, your host for Epic Tales from the Sewers podcast with my co-host, Mr. Eric Will. How are you doing, Eric? Doing all right about yourself there, Justin. Wonderful, wonderful. We're on a very special early recording because uh, of the time constraints for our guest. But uh, our guest today is an artist who has worked on books from IDW, Image Comics, Black Caravan, and Source Point Press. He's also worked on Primordial, Cult of Dracula, Do You Poo? And both the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles IDW series and covers for The Last Ronin. You're totally going to know who he is. So uh, lastly, you can find his Instagram with his characters through the year series. Um, we welcome Mr. Camilo Di Pietrantonio. That is, that How's is it going, everybody? Good. <laughs> good morning. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. <laughs> you know, I am a podcast host. No, <laughs> no we, we no, try. You well. Welcome. Welcome to our, our show, our family. Um, we are so happy to have you here. I didn't, I didn't mention this earlier, but we're like huge fans of your art. I, I oh, think... And, and I mean, just uh, I, I wasn't going to go into this right away, but I am. You blew me away with this dark claw that you just put on your Instagram because oh, yeah. I am like the biggest dark claw fan. And uh, <laughs> it, if if you don't know, it's dark claw is a mixture of Wolverine and Batman. And uh, you know, Camilo has one that is on his Instagram. It is just absolute fire. It's so cool. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I love all those amalgam comics from the nineties. That needs to come back, you know. It's yeah. it, this is like the the perfect time that's for something like that. Let's just get like put it on an independent label and be like, hey, yeah. someone can just play with this and, and make it fun. Yeah. Do it online. Who cares? You know? Yeah, and it'd be another opportunity for great artists too. It'd be like, hey, yeah. you want to you want to try Spider Boy? Have at it. You know. <laughs> um, one of the things I wanted to ask, um, I've noticed that you have like a particular style. And um, you, you really accentuate kind of like the beak aspect of the turtles. Where does your style come from? Is it just mostly the 87 cartoon or do you pull from somewhere else? Um, I pull from a few places. So you mentioned my, um, my turtles through the ages series. Um, at the end of each series, I had done my own like version of the character. And if you look at it, like I, I take from the next mutation, I take from, the, the 87 series, I take a little bit from everywhere that of the versions that I watched, you know, when I was younger. So I don't take much from, like, the new series, like Rise or um, what was the one before that, whatever whatever it was, 2013, yeah. But um, from the ones I watched as a kid, you know, like the, the, the original movie and the original cartoons yeah. and The Next Mutation, you know, I, I try to take a little bit from everything, you know, a little bit from all those versions. If you notice, like, the front shells... I like to I like the look of the um the next mutation shells and there's a bit of that going on in how I draw the front shell. No, no kidding. But the, yeah, I think the beak mostly came from not just the cartoon but um the toys, the toy line. You know, the toy line all had that chunky beak, and yeah, I love it. Yeah, I like that too, and and we're starting to see that now on like the Saturday morning cartoons with um with that style, and they're kind yeah. of bringing that back and. I mean, you really, you see that in, in the pilot episode of the cartoon, and then it kind of goes away eventually. I yeah. It was a really sharp kind of look where it's like, this is this is cool, and it gives them kind of like that facial definition. I really yeah, like especially when they, when they draw with that line through the middle, you know, that mm -hmm. contour line. Yeah. I like that, and, and I've noticed that on a bunch of stuff. And, I mean, talking about your, your Turtles Through the Ages, blew me away that you threw the Jim Lee interpretations in there. Oh, man. Yeah. I don't know if you well, saw this, Eric. The Jim Lee was a recent, a recent um, thing that I did, like the, those those Jim Lee versions. I'm gonna end up drawing all four of them, but um, they weren't actually in my Through the Ages original series, like the the pieces, the the posters you can buy on my website. Those Jim Lee ones aren't in there, but um, I, I love drawing all different versions of Turtles. So I've done the the Batman Team and T series versions as well. Mm -hmm. You know, the Nightwing Leo and the Robin. Um, Mikey and stuff like that, yeah, and so then the Jim Lee red ones. Raph, it looks really good. Yeah, the Jim <clears> Lee <throat> ones. Like, I actually never knew they existed. Like, I, I only recently, like in the last six months, saw them. I don't know how I, I, I never knew about them. Oh, so you, you really never cool. had the figures or anything? No, no. The figures so, are hard to get. Like, they only released three of them out of the four. They right, never released yeah. Leo. And I want, a, I want to get them now, but they cost too much. 
Oh, um, we'll talk. We'll, we'll figure right. something out. Trust me. Okay. I, I got a guy. <laughs> right, good. Just like if, if you need a comic cover, Eric's your guy. You know, for, for action <laughs> figures, I know a few. So okay. I, got a, I, got a, I got a couple hundred sitting up yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Eric, do you, do you have any of those? Just to, did you ever get any of the, the Jim Lee reinterpretations? I, I, I don't think I have those. I, I To be honest with you, I don't think I've really ever looked into those. I mean, I've I've always been getting, you know, I've gotten the old school, you know, 87, 90s turtle cartoon ones. So. Yeah, it but, came out with the uh, Savage Dragon line in, I want to say it was like 98 or 99 or something, but it's cool. But there, there's a cool book that we did an interview with the um, the author of called Rad Plastic, and, and it's listed in there as well. So because it's from Plastic. Yeah. That's kind of fun. That's neat. And um, you did mention the the movies and all that being a big inspiration. I absolutely yeah. saw that on that last Ronin 2 cover that you did where, where yeah. it's Ronin and he's sitting by the tree. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is like ripped from the movie. And it, yeah. it's so photorealistic. I just I thought it was so great. Yeah, I, I also in that piece, I added, um, if you remember in the scene in the movie, they were roasting marshmallows. Yeah. And um, I actually... In the corner of the cover, you can see that same packet of marshmallows, the same brand. I added that in there as well. Are they uh, state health marshmallows? Up. No, they were jumbo. I think they were jumbo. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's a good scene, too. It's like, oh, I brought marshmallows. Knock it off. You know, <laughs> that's pretty classic. Yeah, that was, that was, I think we even listed this one on, on our um, top covers for uh, Last Ronin because it's just, it's so good. And oh, that's I, awesome. I stumbled across it on like a Facebook group and like the last Ronin group or something like that. And someone actually tagged you in it. And I'm like, Oh my God, you know, <laughs> like, it's so funny. You know, I just, um, I really enjoy it. I, I think that the style that you hit hits like this um, bit of nostalgia and um, just from, from the same things that I enjoyed as a kid. So yeah, that's what well, I we probably, enjoy. we probably grew up around the same time. Yeah, if you're 41 or close to it, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm 34, so okay. No, you're, you're, I'm about to be 37. Years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, I was uh, was I seven years old when when the Turtles cartoon, and uh, three years old when the first uh, comic came out. So, <laughs> you know, yeah, it's it's all fun, you know. But um, how familiar were you, if at all, with um, the Palladium role playing game? And they had something that was called uh, the Turtles Down Under. I didn't know if uh, you were at all familiar with that. No, not at all, man. Not at so all. The... I, yeah, I, I came to Australia when I was five. So it, for the first few years here, I really didn't know much, you know. Like um, if that was a game that was popular down here, I wouldn't have learnt about it till way after it came out because my first few years here, I didn't speak the language. So oh, yeah. I wasn't playing any games, you know. So. Oh, yeah, no, I, I, I get that, yeah. absolutely. You know, um, it's it's interesting because it's kind of like a post-apocalyptic sort of view of like mutants rather than like the turtles, but it all takes place in like the outback and all that. So, oh, cool. you know, yeah, it's, it's kind of neat. I was just wondering if you had heard of it. So, no, we, never, never. We, when we were talking to uh, Freddie Williams, uh, that was one of the big influences that he had was that Palladium game and such. So, I figured I'd bring it up. You know? Oh, cool! I should look into it. So, um. When um when did you first become aware of turtles? Like uh, when you're a kid, like what was the thing that got you into them? Um, the first the first time I saw I remember the first time I saw a Ninja Turtle. Um, I was about four years old, um, and I was living in Italy. And um, in the little town that I'm from in Italy, there was a like a convenience store that sold a bit of everything, and they had the Ninja Turtle in there. I still got it. It's a it's a Donatello, and it squirts water from its mouth. It's like a sewer, sewer surfer <laughs> or something like that. And um, I wanted it. And my mom, would, my mother didn't get it for me. But um, it was around Christmas time, and I ended up getting it for Christmas. And that was the first time I saw a turtle. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Like, it's and then when I came, such a vivid memory of it, too. Yeah, well, well, when I came to Australia, like, it was turtles were all, everywhere here. So it was, like, the first link I made. Like, oh, I remember that from, you know, from back home. Like, Ninja Turtles, like, it must be a thing here, too. So when I was a kid, I was crazy about Ninja Turtles, man. Like, absolutely crazy. Yeah, I can relate to that. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and, I, I don't mean, know whether if it's I like, or not. The, <laughs> yeah, like the Turtles, the, the toys, the comics, and then video yeah. games. It's like you're hitting us on every level. Yeah. It, it was always, it was always um, funny. Like, 
and cool for me because I always had I had all these uncles that had the same names as the turtles. No way. Yeah, yeah I had an uncle Leonardo. Um, my grandmother's brother was called Donatello. Um, I had you know my cousin's dad was called Raphael, and who was uh, who was, uh, who else did I have? I didn't have a Michelangelo, but I knew who Michelangelo was. You know. Wow. What a unique so, connection, too. You know, yeah, like, like kind of crazy. familial. Yeah. Wow. Do Do you have um Do you have like a unique connection to pizza as well from being uh, Italian in descent? Yeah, I do. I'm a bit of a pizza fanatic, actually. Oh wow. Um, okay. Yeah, I got a I got a wood fire oven in the backyard, but you know I'm very specific with my pizza, man. Like, I've got rules, and if you break the rules, it's not a pizza anymore. All right. You know, like, well, let's hear yeah, these rules. I, I, well, I like you know traditional Neapolitan pizza. Okay. So, cooks for ninety minutes in an oven at four hundred and fifty degrees Celsius. I don't know what that is at Fahrenheit, but it's hot. A um, lot of ingredients aren't allowed. No pineapple, you know, okay. no chicken. Yeah. My, there, man. There's, there's, so, yeah. my man, there's so yeah, my man. You've won him over. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So w- once you put those things on a pizza, it's not a pizza for me. I call it a food disc. Okay, a food disc. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> so what's, what's yeah, I love the, pizza, man. the most authentic uh, Italian pizza? Do you feel? It's the margarita. The margarita is the first pizza. I love it. I love yeah. it. Yeah. We, we love the margarita. It's, it's yeah. probably our favorite in the house too. So, you know, um, I, I will, I think we just had like chicken on pizza last week, but it's not my favorite <laughs> either, but I will do pineapple. I, I like pineapple and pepperoni on my food disc and that's okay. You know, it's, yeah, just, it's a, I, but, you know, I appreciate that you called it a food disc. Yeah, I did just for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <thanks. laughs> What's the, um, so, so obviously you're making your own pizza. You're not sending out for pizza down there. No, I, I was going to ask what what's uh, popular uh, toppings in Australia. Um, we get we get some pretty good stuff here. Like I got um one of my favorites recently is this thing called enduya. It's a chili paste from the south of Italy Ooh. that they usually use in like in making salami and sausages. And yeah, I just okay. put little drops of it all over the pizza. If you like spicy food, that's pretty good. That sounds good. Um, yeah, but the dough is also important, man. I, I make a really good dough. It takes me seventy-two hours to cure this dough. So, nice. yeah. yeah we, we if you ever come to Australia, if you ever come down here, I'll, I'll make you one. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, yeah. no, that's... I'm gonna hold you up to. It. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously, <laughs> you never no, know. I, I love making pizza for people, man. It's one of like, if I, I think if I wasn't drawing, I'd be a be a chef. Yeah, you know? I, I love it's pizza creativity. People, so. I, it, yeah. They go hand in hand, and and I mean experimentation when you're you know on the page with a pen or a pencil uh, versus when you're in the kitchen. It's you know, and and um, I mean, for someone like myself, it's like I've never been anything more than like a mediocre artist at best, where I could copy something, but I can express myself in the kitchen, and I can make something that would be like, wow, this is really good. So yeah, that's man. that's where I find my creativity. And yeah. we try to bring the food aspect of turtles, like about pizza and stuff like that, into the podcast a lot, and. Every episode features a uh, a pizza recipe, so you know maybe I'll have to hit you up for one or something. But um, yeah, I'll give you one. <laughs> oh, cool! Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I always found that um, like one of the secrets to good dough is using the right water. Is there um, anything specific that you use in terms of water? Or you just use water from the tap, or? Well, yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know how it is everywhere in America, but our our, our tap water here is pretty good. I was in America like 11 years ago and um, I was surprised when I was switching on taps to see the sort of water coming out. But um, but yeah, here the water is really drinkable and it's really clean. So I just use tap water. Um, the flour is really important. You know, you got to have um, proper double zero flour and um, it's really detailed. Man. I, I don't know. I might bore you with this stuff, but um so there's different kinds of flours. There's there's high protein flour and there's low mm-hmm. protein flour, and depending on how long you want to let the, the dough rest is the, like depends on what flour you use. But if you can find like double zero flour, which I'm sure you can find easily, mm-hmm. that's the flour to use. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm sure that's different than than what I have. I've got like the all purpose, you know, stuff. I, I yeah. try not to get the bleached, but you know, we'll get like the the whole wheat or something because we're healthy, <laughs> Eric. We're healthy in this. Yeah. House. Yeah, I'm like I don't have a gut for a reason. (laughs) I just no, I just turned my shell around. It's on the front. Right. (laughs) That's great. So, um, 
what about uh, comics uh, made you want to get into the industry? Like, uh, I, I see you've got a Weapon X shirt on, which, uh, yeah. you know, that totally speaks to me because I'm a huge Wolverine fan. Um, yeah. what, what, what kind of origins do you have with comics, like, as a kid? Like, what got you there? So when I was a kid, um, you know, it was pretty, it was a little bit hard for me to um, to learn at school because of the early language barrier that I had. Um, but comics were one thing that like helped me with that. So I used to, there was a, there was a news agency close to my house. I have to walk past it every day to go to school and I'd get comics from there because there's not many comic stores here. You know, there's less now than there was when I was a kid, but even when I was a kid, there wasn't many. So we, I used to get most of my comics from the, from the news agency, like off the newsstand. And yeah, this, I'd, I'd buy them before school and they would help me like, you know, sort of, you know, learn how to read you know, and, um, and get better at writing and stuff. And um, so I always loved comics as a kid because of that. And then, you know, I had this, I had a group of friends back in, 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 in my primary school days um, and we all loved comics. So those, that sort of brought us together. So at a, at a young age, like we were trying to make our own comics and stuff like that. And um, one friend in particular, he, he knew a lot. Like he was a real big comics fan and he, so was his dad. So I'd get all these stories from them about the comics and, you know, I'd know, I'd know storylines from comics that I'd never read or never owned because of these, these friends I had. And, um, yeah, that, that sort of built, like, a, a love for them, you know, and um, the Weapon X shirt, like, that's... It's actually... The back of this is um, Barry Windsor Smith's Weapon nice. X. It's my favourite Weapon X um, storyline. Yeah, um, Marvel, Marvel Presents story. It's a two-issue yeah. uh, arc. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's, it's the best Wolverine story, I think. The it's so brutal. Out of this like, yeah, that, yeah, Barry Windsor Smith. I mean, it's like, I, I may not love everything about, like, the way that he draws, like, like female faces and all that, but, like, the yeah. other stuff that he does, I mean, like, even he drew, like, a deer, and you're like, wow, that looks yeah. amazing. But yeah. his, his stuff is so good, and I, yeah, I love the awesome. Valiant comics he did eventually, and yeah, Barry yeah. Windsor Smith's a favorite of mine for sure. You know, um, there there was a great arc that he did on X Men, and I think it was called Life Death, Life yeah. Death, where um, uh, uh, Storm actually lost her powers, and it was it was just so good. That's awesome, yeah. But yeah, like those those early days I had at school, like buying those comics, and I'd I'd copy all the images like in the in the lunch break at school. Um, those were those were like they set the foundations for me to really love comics. And when I was a kid, I always said I wanted to be a cartoonist, you know. Nice. And then I sort of I sort of grew up and like, you know, di drifted away from it, you know. Like I, I went started to get a bit older. Your interests change and stuff. I always I always liked it, but you know, I sort of lost a little bit of interest for a long time. And um, after school, I went to university. I studied something completely unrelated to comics, you know. And I worked in the industry in a different industry for about five years, and um, then that friend of mine from school that introduced me to comics, he passed away. Oh. And around that time when he passed away, you know, and well, I hadn't spoken to him in years, like you know, since school finished. Um, but around that time he passed away, it made me think like, I hate this job, and I wanted to be a cartoonist when I was younger. Maybe I should start, you know, thinking about it again. So like this art, this little sort of art career that I have only really started like three or four years ago because I only really started taking my art seriously again about seven or eight years ago. You know, before that, I was just drawing as a hobby, like maybe once once a month or so, you know, drawing a little picture. But um, yeah, it was once this friend passed away that I sort of like thought, oh, you know what, I'm going to quit this job and I'm just going to, you know, work a part a, a, a crappy part-time retail job and just lock myself up and draw until until someone will buy something you know so so that's you sort said of about origin story. seven eight Sorry? years ago was, you said yeah. seven eight years ago was when you really started taking it seriously yeah um, seven or eight years ago is when i quit my 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 office job to to pursue this you know and i knew it was going to take some time so i, I have a I had a part-time job, which I still I still work this part-time job. You know, I still I, I came back from work at nine PM tonight. Mm. Um, but every year that goes past, like that part-time job gets smaller and smaller. It's less and less, you know. So right now it's only like eleven hours a week. So the the bill, the arts paying the rest of the bills, which is good. But um, but yeah, it was about seven or eight years ago that I'm like, you know what, I gotta I want to make this happen. You know, that's awesome. And I want, 
it's not easy, man. Like, uh, it, there was a lot of, like, rude wake-up calls, you know, like, where I realized how behind I was, like, you know, how, how much better I have to be. You know, you sort of, I saw, you sort of fall in the trap. Like, if, if you're a kid that likes to draw, you grow up with all your family telling you that, like, oh, you're, you're so good, you're so good. But really, you're not that good. It's just that you're the only person they're seeing, you're, like, they're seeing you draw. So they don't see any other kids draw. So, of course, they're going to tell you you're good. And there's no comparison, right? Yeah. And, like, I sort of, I, I was so silly to think that I would quit this job and just, you know, in a couple of months, I would, I would be getting work or I'd be selling commissions and stuff. And it was sort of a little bit of a rude awakening when I'm like, shit, this is going to be harder than I thought, you know? <laughs> so I remember I was selling commissions for $10 a piece and I didn't even cover the markers I was using on the paper, you know? Oh, wow. I would tell you whoever yeah. got those for $10 a piece, they're a lucky man. Or lucky they weren't, they weren't anything whoever. special. So. <laughs> nothing, nothing special. But so. still, yeah. I mean. I still remember the first person who bought a piece off me. And he ended up buying like maybe 30 or 40 pieces, but they were all $10 each. You know, wow. so, but still, yeah. I mean, that's that's enough to cover your table fee probably where you were. And, yeah. Well, yeah, even yeah, if it yeah, wasn't yeah. like all at that time, but yeah. I mean, yeah, that's, that's yeah. a little boost of confidence. What, what's been yeah, I mean, the... just having someone wanted to pay for your art was a boost of confidence, you know? <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and that dude, like that dude that bought that art for $10 a piece, he came to me like years after, like maybe three or four years after, and he wanted another piece because he saw I, I had improved a little bit, you know? And I still charged him $10. No and way. Like, oh, yeah. Awesome. Like, I'm, I'm always going to charge that dude $10. Wow. Yeah. That's great. He's got ten dollars for the rest of his life. That's so, that's fantastic. He's a lucky hey, man. Shout out, shout out <laughs> to him. You know, hopefully yeah. he listens mm-hmm. to this. But uh, his know. name's Michael Zadell. He's from Perth. Okay. Yeah, I haven't I haven't heard from him in years, but if he ever hits me up again, it's ten dollars. No, that's great. So <laughs> you know, um, I, I was going to ask, what has been like the greatest uh, achievement for you so far in your career? Um, that achievement like changes all the time. So like at first, well, so far, yeah, I mean. You'd so far, to. I mean, like, it's 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 the last run and stuff, you know. Um, I thought that, like, when I got the TMNT issue 100 cover, I thought that would be the best moment. But then I got the Ronan covers, and that was, you know, that turned out to be the best moment. But I think um, I think the last run in issue one hit a sweeter spot for me than issue two because of the way it came about. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's, like, a nicer story behind how that piece became a cover. So that was a uh, that was probably the best moment so far. That issue one, Ronan. Now, um, we were talking about this earlier, but you you did yeah. covers for Last Ronan one and two. Um, yeah. How come we didn't see you do covers for three through five? So issue one, um, I'll tell you the story about issue one. Uh, issue one was actually like it came out. Co- uh, Ronan came out like just when COVID started, and when COVID started. All the comic shops here, which isn't many, but you know they start to suffer because like they, Diamond wasn't sending comics out anymore, so yeah. they weren't allowed to open. So a lot of comic stores here like risked going out of business. And um, John Sommariva, who's another turtle artist, you know, much greater than me, he um, put together an initiative here where all Australian artists would create a piece and we'd auction it off, and then the everything, all the money we raised, we'd send out to these comic stores so that you know could pay some bills. And um, the piece I did ended up, you know, fetching a, a, a pretty nice amount of money. But after it was sold, I got it digitally colored by Daniel Chavez, an American artist, a uh, colorist, you know. And um, this store in the UK ended up seeing it digitally colored. And it, originally, it wasn't even the last run in that in that piece. It was just I made up like a scenario where Raphael is the last turtle, oh, wow. you know. And um, the original piece was actually. He had a red bandana, and he had all the other bandanas of his brothers on his arm. But anyway, that piece, when I got it colored, I told Daniel Chavez, oh, you know, make it the last Ronan. You know, like that's that's coming out soon, and maybe I can sell some prints of it, you know, oh, some posters. Wow. Then. But, yeah, then this store in the UK, they ended up picking it up as a cover. So um, that's, like, that's why issue one was such a nice thing, that it was actually a charity piece that I really put all my effort into, you know, and it ended up not only raising money, a, a nice amount of money for these comic stores, but it also ended up becoming a cover, you know. But um, so, yeah, that store in the UK, Slab City Comics, they, they gave me issue one. 
And then I done issue two with Sin City Comics in the States. And they were both approved around the same time. And the reason why I didn't do any more is because number one, there was COVID, so all of IDW had like a like a restructure with their with their employees, like employees and stuff. So um I think like, you know, Bobby, the editor, he 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 ended up moving away and the the amount of covers they were approving was less. There was a paper shortage because of COVID. There was all sorts of crap going on because of COVID that meant it was harder to get a cover approved. But also, um, so Slab City in the UK, they they actually wanted me to do all five because I was doing issue two with Sin City. They didn't want to, they didn't want me and Sin like them and Sin City to have a cover for issue two by the same artist because they thought you know collectors don't have an unlimited amount of money, and they didn't want to put people in a position where if they had to choose between two of my covers, they'd have to choose between two of their stores and they might undercut each other. You know, it was actually a, a, a really nice thing for them to do. And because of that, they didn't want to do issue three, four, and five because they wanted to have a complete set with me. So they said it's either issue one and just issue one or all five. And I wasn't going to pull my cover with Sin City. Yeah. So I'm just like, whatever, I'll just get these two. And then, yeah, COVID hit. And the rest of the, like, we actually, me and Sin City actually done another cover that didn't end up going to print because of COVID, you know? Uh-huh. And, um, yeah, and I think it was, I think they wanted to use it for issue five, the last issue. So there could have been more covers in between too. But, um, yeah, then they never ended up going to print. And I've done the original art. If you want to show it, if you want me to show it, I'll show it to you. Oh, yes, please. Yeah. yeah so that was it there. So it's, that's so amazing. It's a and homage look, to, the uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a homage to, uh, Kevin Eastman's first turtle drawing. And we're calling this one the last turtle. And yeah, so that was gonna be the cover for like issue five, I think. But never happened. So what can you do? Do you know has Kevin seen that? Nah, I, I don't think so. No. Yeah, it's great. I mean, it's mm-hmm. just everything from like the proportions and all that. That's just it's it's so amazing on how you can just kind of capture that complete vibe, but make it your own. And like I was saying about the face with the beak and that contour line and all that, it's it's amazing. That's that's a really great piece. Thanks, man. You, you could you could put that on t-shirts. <laughs> yeah, I'd wear one. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 I like would make that a one. Cool figure. Yeah, it would make a cool toy. Yeah, it would. To be honest, that's a great idea. I think it would. Yeah. I think it would be. I think. I, I was just talking to someone about the Mondo figure that they made a couple of years back, and it was of the first turtle. Now, yeah, that's right. Find it. It's like five hundred dollars. But yeah, they, <laughs> yeah. That that would be a, that would be a great collectible, but. I mean, I don't know who, who to say. Oh, what are you excited about for Turtles now? Like, uh, whether it's, like, the action figures, the comics with the Armageddon game, like, um, the Lost Years or anything. Are you are you still deep entrenched in this? Like, did you read Rast- Last Ronin and all that? Yeah, I read Last Ronin. I loved it. Um, I am excited for the for the, the Lost Years. Is that what it's, yeah, that's what it's called, Lost Years. But um, I'm really enjoying all these new Turtle games they've put out. The new um the Cowabunga collection oh, so and good. um you know the other the other Shredder's Revenge. Like I'm excited to see that like the that sort of like I, I find that Turtles yeah. every generation has their version of Turtles. Yeah, that's it. I bought it on Nintendo Switch. But um yeah, every generation has their own version of Turtles. And it's cool to see that like they're gonna make a new movie soon and yep. like we're gonna get like another new version. That's what I'm most excited about. You know, that, that new movie that Seth Rogan's producing. Yeah, there's also a, going to be a live action one too. Yeah, exactly. So, and they're the, also the Mutant Mayhem. Is that one live action? No, that no, one. The, the Mutant Mayhem is the Seth Rogen one. Okay. The yeah. Live action is going to be done by Saturday Night Live. Uh, oh, people. you're right. The Colin Jost one. Okay. <laughs> Mister Scarlett Johansson. Yeah. Yeah. Then they're talking about making. They're talking about making two games of the Turtles, which is the 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 second part for the Cowboy Classics. So they're pretty much talking about like like the games that I got for like Xbox and PlayStation and all that stuff, oh, like true. the whole uh, the battle battle nexus and the the nightmare one and the smash up and the TMNT one. Um, I think they're talking about getting those uh, redone, and they're also talking. I'm hoping that they're thinking about doing one like um, like right now. I'm playing God of War. I have the God of War on my monitor right now. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> like a style like that for the Ronin. 
I think that'll be cool. Oh, okay. I know that they're mm-hmm. talking about doing like a game, like uh, a game, like like an RPG, I guess you could say, type deal, like where you got to get around, like City or Arkham City, or like yeah. maybe even Breath of the Wild would be a, a good example oh, of it. Okay. Um, uh, I, I, I'm pretty sure that they're talking about that. I think I've seen a couple articles about them talking about trying to do something like that, which I hope they that they go for, you know, like a Breath of the Wild, Arkham City style type gameplay i yeah. think it'll fit the, you know the last run in turtle you know so if um say we were going to be playing uh, a three or four player game of shredder's revenge on the nintendo switch who are you picking camille uh i'll pick mikey man mikey's my you, favorite mikey you like the speed yeah. the speed table yeah. okay that's good i'm a, i am a staunch leo stan you know and I, i'm gonna <laughs> i just always leo is my guy it's just always gonna be as it is and Eric, you are? Of course, Raphael. Raphael, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Leo could be the worst character, and sometimes he is. And I'm still just going to go for it every single time. I just, I adore the character, so. Have you um have you watched the new Rise of the Team and Team movie? I did, yeah. Yeah, and mm-hmm. um, I actually was going to bring that up because I saw some of the, the art that you were doing on your Instagram. Like the yeah. uh, mutated Raphael, you know, yeah. and the, uh, the Leo and kind of like... Um, like the, I don't know if it's a reimagining, I would say, but like some of the, the different stuff that you did with it, I, it looks amazing. Yeah, that, that was based on the, the, the future version of Leo from that movie. I really like what they did with Leo in that movie. A, a lot of people didn't, but um, yeah, I liked it. I liked seeing him have to earn the leadership role, you know, and become worthy of it. Character development is important. Yeah. And, and I mean, it's yeah. it's so different with, with that. I haven't watched the whole series, but. I think it's got some fun elements to it when you get past like the initial sticker shock, you know? Yeah. I mean, I haven't watched the series either, um, but I think, I think some of the, the, the the critic, the criticism it's gotten is a little bit, you know, maybe, maybe I think it's unfair because I thought the movie was so good. You know, yeah, the movie was really good. Yeah. I, the Mm -hmm. the movie caught me off guard and I'm like, this is excellent. Yeah. And it looks was, great. Like the, I, the animation's fantastic. Yeah. You, um, I'm sorry, Eric. You were saying? Oh, I was just saying because, like, I didn't, I wasn't, a, I wasn't really a big fan of the anim- animated series, like the the series. But once I seen that trailer of that of of the movie getting ready to pop up, like, I was like, okay, I'm intrigued. Let's see how this goes. Let's see how it goes. And then me, and my son, watched it. Of course, we watched it probably about four or five more times, if not more. Yeah. So. And, and yeah. he likes uh, he likes the 2012 turtles so much. Like you guys are always talking about that. So what what's his opinion of Rise then? He likes Rise. To be honest with you, he he prefers to he he prefers Rise. But he I mean whatever's on Totally Turtles on Pluto TV, you know he watches it. But he's like Sunday we gotta watch Rise. It's on there. Oh, okay, know? all right. So oh. Sunday. That's that's the one that always has the commercial for Archie's Strange Mysteries. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it, it, kind of, it kind of reminds me of uh, Scooby Doo. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But there's no dog. You know. Yeah. Kind of... <laughs> we're Reggie. <we're> <laughs> that's that's fantastic. So, um, if you were ever going to do something like a crossover with Turtles, what character would you pick to do kind of like a uh, a crossover story? Man, I it, think it could be a team too. It could be anything. Well, I would like to see a Raphael Wolverine team up. That'd be great. Yeah, I mean, the, I the think, art I think possibilities like turtles, are like right yeah. there. Yeah, I think Turtles and X Men together would be awesome. Yeah, two mutant teams. I think that'd be cool. Yeah, that um, that X Men '92 sort of vibe, like from yeah. the animated cartoon series. Yeah, Wouldn't that'd be great. And it, yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, the art styles could really mesh well. Yeah. But, you know, they're both mutants, so they're both, like, you know, the turtles are in the shadows and that they're, they're scared to come out top because, you know, people are scared and the mutants sort of, the X-Men share, like, a similar thing, you know, so. They're in the same, they're in the same state, too. Like, they're all in yeah. New York. They can just be there. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm with it. I, I think that's a great one. And um, I'm, I'm just surprised it's never happened. Because we, we've had yeah. the Batman crossover and, mm-hmm. you know, we've had uh, Savage Dragons crossed over with them. There was one point that they were going to cross over with all of image like spawn and, and yeah. you know, gen 13, like all of them, they were going to cross yeah. like witchblade, but it, it just, uh, it didn't pan out, you know? Yeah. 
And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, I, I totally agree. Like the idea of having wrath of Wolverine, it's like, would, who would calm the other one down is the question. You know? Yeah. You know? It's like, you get in a berserker rage and, you know, is this going to be like body count or is this going to be different where it's like Raph has to learn a little bit about himself, you know, to talk Wolverine down. And in, in that sense, he develops more as a character. I, I think it's I think it's great. Now we just got to get somebody to write it. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I want to ask um, about any sort of like original characters and things like that. Do you have anything that you're developing or that you've ever um, thought about putting out as an independent comic? Yeah, man, I've I've written a few stories. Um, one of them, I think, like my my art isn't at the level that it should be for me to like, you know, draw it properly. But there is one that I that I is a much simpler story that I have um that I'm working on that I've written and I'm probably going to put out a, a one shot about this character soon. Um, I'm, I've drawn about like two or three pages of this one shot story, but um. Yeah, so I think original is like I really want to do that. You know, at the same time, I gotta I gotta pay bills, man. And like Yeah, of course. <laughs> the, the, those original characters, you know, like even if they're really good, like I just I don't think they're gonna make me as much money as drawing the turtles right now. So I, agree. I gotta, yeah. I gotta and, and then because of that, like my, my time's limited, you know. So this this original character that I wanna, you know, draw is always on the back burner and every time I get into a into a position where I want to start drawing him again. It's been like a year and those, the pages that I've drawn, I think they're crap and I think I can do better. So I'll start again, you know, but definitely like soon I want to have like a one shot, like maybe a little ash can or something, you know, I sort of want to have it ready for next year around this time because I'm going to go to Granite Con. So I would like to bring it with me there. Yeah. That'd be fantastic. Then, then you can, you can actually get it out. Um, you know, and, and and I mean, there's so many options now with like Indiegogo or Kickstarter and all that yeah. where, you know, and, and you can do different things. It's like, OK, if we hit this tier, you know, we're going to add three more pages or, yeah. you know, we're going to add like an additional cover or something along those lines. So, you know, and then it, it could really help with the investment. But I'm, yeah. I, I, it, I agree with you because it's like putting out your own stuff in a physical medium is so expensive yeah. in the return yeah. on investment. I mean, you, you have to put out like 50,000 books to make, you know, X dollars. And exactly. you know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's tough. Like, exactly. It, I, I think that if I brought, you know, my own comic book to a, to a convention here in Australia, I don't think it, it do too well. And it's not like, it's not that I think people here, um, you know, uh, 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 any less or like, you know, they're, they're, they're sort of like, they wouldn't like it. It's just that the interests are different. I think if I brought it to the States, there might be more interest for it, you know, like a lot of the conventions that we have here, which is where I, I would need to sell this book. They're more pop culture, like blanket pop culture conventions, not, not solely comic conventions. So there's, there's a lot of, you know, comic fans there, but I don't know how many comic readers would be there willing to give an indie book a chance, you know, oh, whereas in okay. the States, I, yeah, in the States, I think like that it's a little bit different, you know, from what I see anyway, from what like I see online, I think that maybe it could go a bit better. That's why I want to have it ready for next year. So. Yeah, I, I would agree with you because the the I'm in I'm in the Chicago area, right? So Chicago, yeah. Illinois, and we have uh, used to be Wizard World. Now it's uh, Fan Expo, and um, yeah. the the other one is C two E two. And these yeah. are they've got everything at them. Like, like you said, you can go and you can find anime. You can find you yeah. know Norm from Cheers is there. Okay, great. Yeah. You know, but there's a huge following, and part of it that is just comics. Like when yeah. Jim Lee was there, the, the roof blew off. You know, yeah. it's it's just one of those things where it's like it's very specific to that sort of culture. It, yeah. And we, we do have other things like Walker Stalker for like horror yeah. conventions. And and those are really cool and really fun. But that's not where you go to find like, oh, I'm looking for like artist uh, comics and things like that. Maybe you can get like art of like horror stuff, but it's just a different yeah. vibe. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's, it's not to say that there's not indie books here that are really good. You know, like there's, I'll have friends that make indie comics here, and they're they're really good, man. Like they're really good comics, but um, and they do really well. But they've also been doing it for so long, you know, like that they have oh, yeah. their whole following is based on these comics they've created. Whereas mine isn't, you know, mine's based on my turtle stuff and all my fan art and you know the covers I've done. So I, I don't know. I think it'd be a hard sell. Maybe maybe I'm not confident enough, but 
you know, um, I'll bring it to the States with me. I'll, I'll make sure that I have it for Granicon. I, I know there's a really good uh, independent uh, film community out there. Like, at least there, there used to be a couple couple years back. I don't know if that's changed due to COVID and all that, but there was a lot of really great independent films that were coming out of, like, the Australia area. And, and it yeah, was, yeah. like, this, this whole new wave. And, I mean, like, I remember when, like, Wolf Creek came out, and I'm like, What? You know, like a lot of this stuff yeah. was like real, and I mean that's going back to like two thousand three and stuff like that. But I, I don't know how long it lasted. But there was like this Australian new wave of uh, independent films that was just like phenomenal for a long period of time. Yeah. But I, I yeah, can well, imagine yeah. the comics would uh, be similar. Yeah, the comics are awesome, man. Like there's 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 a few comics from here that I've that I've actually done covers for, and even a few sequential pages. Um, my friend has a comic book called The Talking Bread. It's awesome. <laughs> The you know, uh, yeah, it's awesome. Um, you know, there's there's another really popular indie comic here called um, Killaroo, and I had a cover on that, um, and that's really popular too. And they're always running Kickstarters and stuff for their their next issues, and they do really well. But as I said, like they they've been doing it for so long, and and it's it's so, they're so refined, the characters are so refined, and there's so much history to their books that like they they do so well. And I don't think that I could compete. You know, I don't think um. I don't think my comic would do as good as theirs, and if it didn't, I, I would be upset. You know, so because <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you got that that natural competitiveness to you, it sounds yeah, like, like there's a little bit of competition, a little bit of um, you know, just like like we also talked about the money. Like it'd be so much time invested into it that I would need to make some money back, and I don't know if I could, you know. So it's it's one of those things like I don't know if you notice a, a, a difference in, in it or anything now, but like do you see that there's a difference since since Ronan in like the popularity that you're gaining in the States versus in Australia? Is it like you're you're huge or anything? Like um how does how does that like the, the fame no, aspect I, vary? But that's um that's weird. So like nothing really changed for me he uh, like much. Like, you know, I, I guess like the, the covers I did were were retailer like exclusives, you know, so people know that like they're not, they're not the IDW standard covers. They're like, you know, you got to get it from a specific store. You know, that's not to say that they don't have to be approved by IDW and, and stuff like that. Like, um, but here, like, you know, I started to become a guest at the, at the conventions, you know, but um, the conventions aren't like, there's not many here. There's like two in every city in every state a year, you know, so there's, there's two big, companies that do conventions here and yeah i've, I've become a i've become a um a guest but i haven't noticed a, like a big jump in in the money i'm making at these conventions or or stuff like that it still remained about the same but um i've noticed that like my following if i look at my instagram following you know the amount of people that started following me from the us when i was when i started doing these covers it's gone from like from 50 percent of my followers to 90 you know, like now, yeah, I've gained a lot of, of, of followers from the US because of those covers, I'm pretty sure. You know, specifically like issue two of the Ronin, because I think that one like sold out really quickly, like in a couple of hours it was sold out. Yeah, especially and the metal they, version of that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah good luck. <laughs> yeah, they re, they resell they resell on eBay for crazy amounts. So I think that one specifically got me a, a bit of a following in the States, but um it's nothing, nothing huge, man. It's not nothing like I don't feel like a superstar yet. <laughs> no, I, I got you. I just, you know, yeah. in, in terms of like your confidence when you talk about it, it's like people notice. People notice your artwork. People notice how talented you are, and you are talented. It's it's mm -hmm. one of those things where it's like you have a specific you have a specific flair that you bring to this, and it's it does evoke emotions. And I think the last time that that Eric and I really talked about this was when when we talked to Aaron Bartling, and and we we're like, oh okay, and and he had like a specific idea of how he was going to try to pose his original cover, you know, uh, based on evoking emotion. And I, I see that with, with yours. Um, and, and that first last Ronin cover that you did is so detailed and just like, it's so yeah. vibrant, you know, with, with like the colors and stuff like that. It's like, that's just such a great one. And, and I mean, mm -hmm. here we are now two, two to almost two and a half years after it's been released. And, you know, guys like myself and Eric are still chasing those covers. Well, I've got some here, man. Like, I'm oh, okay. Say something. So, <laughs> All right, yeah. Well, I, I should have called you earlier. <laughs> well, that's, yeah, that's I haven't great. met many, but yeah. That's fantastic. Are you doing uh, remarks or anything on those? Um, 
at the yeah, but well, I, listen, I haven't got many left, but um, I'll bring you one each when I come to the states. Oh wow! Yeah. Well, that's uh, that's fantastic. Should, if he's come, if he's come to GraniteCon, we uh we should be working GraniteCon next year if all oh, goes cool. well, and if anyone's cool. listening to this a, a year from now, you'll you'll hopefully be seeing us at a table there. So see his pretty face right here. Yeah, you'll see his pretty beard and all that good <laughs> stuff. So I was um I was told that my issue one hundred of the TMNT is sought after in the states. Like, there's a few collectors there that couldn't get their hands on it because it was an Australian yeah. like, Australian store exclusive. What yeah. what do you say about that, Eric? You're the you're the the rare issue guy. Okay, so I mean, I mean, if you have some to bring some, I mean, to Granite, from uh from what I get uh from Granite is that you won't sell a whole lot of comics there. Okay, cool. Um, you'll sell a lot more artwork. Um, I don't know about how this one's going to go because the last one. You know, Kevin Eastman was there. Kevin Eastman's not going to be at this one, but it's yeah. still there's still like a lot of um, turtle people there. Hey, that yeah. could change too. Who knows? You know. Yeah, and it could change too. And it's one of the biggest ones, especially uh, in 2024. Uh, it's going to be the 40th anniversary, so that's going to be a huge deal. Cool. Huge, huge, huge deal for uh, for turtles, turtle stuff. Period. Which I figure, you know. You being close to Randy MacArthur, yeah, yeah. Shout me. out to uh, Randy for uh, yeah introducing yeah. us too. So yeah, and um, I know that he's probably going to end up getting you over there for the uh the fortieth anniversary because of, I mean, you draw turtles, um, yeah. you know it, it's um, we get we we're getting that book, man. It's, it's the, the issue one hundred. I mean, if it's if it's hard right now, I, I don't even know. Where uh, where did where did you have the retail exclusives for that one at? It was an Australian store. Okay. It was Australian. So yeah. yeah. Ooh. Yeah. I, I would just like to point out that there's a good percentage of our listeners that are actually from Australia. And uh and I'm incredibly mm-hmm. proud that we have one percent from New Zealand, which I worked my ass off to get. So <laughs> shout out to anybody out there who's listening to this show is in Australia or New Zealand. And and I mean we it, it's funny, we have like we have like such a weird following. It's like, we've got 3% is from Ireland. And I'm like, this is great. You know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we're, we're very much an international show. We, we have not had any uh, Antarctic listens yet, but we have been represented on all the other continents. So that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's exciting. And, and um, you know, there, there's a good community and, and, you know, uh, just a lot of, of fandoms and, and stuff for the turtles seems to really connect with uh, Australian listeners and, and Australian readers and all that. I would have thought that X Men would have been the big one because of how they spent all that time in Australia in the eighties and all that. But um, yeah. Turtles is it just seems to be huge. Yeah, Turtles is huge, here, man. Turtles, Turtles is huge everywhere. And like As I was saying be. before, like every generation of people have their version of the Turtles, you know. So yeah, it's it's cool because now uh, my kids. Uh, you know, they, they've grown up in a world where it's always been something that dad's been into. And I mean, we have like pictures of, of myself dressing up as a turtle and then my youngest dressing up and all it, it's always been a thing. So it's, it's so cool. And they're not surprised by it. And they're like, Oh, what's dad doing? Oh, he's playing, um, you know, radical rescue on the Kawabunga collection. Yeah. No, no, mm-hmm. you know, it's a, which, which I have to say is my standout favorite from the Kawabunga collection that, that game boy game. I have been playing oh, the crap out of that. And I'm not like good at the, it like Eric is. <laughs> I like the the the, the Mortal Kombat style one. What is it called? Um, oh, the Tournament Fighters. Yeah, the Tournament Fighters. Yeah. Oh that yeah, one, yeah, yeah. There you go. That's my favorite one, man. But like, when I got that game, I got the game like two weeks ago. When I replayed it, I'm like, shit, this is hard. Oh yeah. I, I didn't, I which didn't version did you play that. though? The the latest one, which is still old, but like the newest one, whatever that is, the one that the, the graphics are a little bit better. Oh, the Genesis uh, one. I the, think. Ge- yeah, mean the Genesis yeah. and the, uh, Super Nintendo, because the, uh, the 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 NES one. I mean, of course, that's an eight bit game. That's an eight bit system. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm be honest with you. That game is that game is hard to get a hold of. Like the actual like Bro. physical game, it's like two hundred dollars lose. Oh so. my god! Wow. Yeah, they're so hard, man. Um, um, I. I, I like that. I'll play the original NES game until like I'm like 80 years old and still be playing that thing. I, I love that game. Mm-hmm. 
I, I would have bought the Kawabunga collection just to play that game. Everything else is a bonus. So I just, that to me is like when, when you're a kid and you have a Nintendo and you have one game besides Mario, that was my game. I eventually yep. got DuckTales after that, but that was like, that was like my game. DuckTales was awesome. I had DuckTales. Oh, it, it's so good. Yeah. You should do a Turtles DuckTales crossover. That's that's what should happen. <laughs> that actually might that actually might work. <laughs> You're like, oh yeah, we're here. We're looking in the sewers, trying to find treasure. Oh, what did we find? You know, <laughs> that might be that might be an interesting one. I don't know if anybody's yeah. ever done that. Huh? No. So, I don't know. That's that's pretty cool. But um, we're we're just about coming to the uh, end of it here. Uh, I wanted to make sure that everybody goes and they follow you on Instagram. Uh, for those who are watching, you can see that it's on the bottom. And I, it's uh, Instacam underscore I L L O. And then we've got yep. uh, at uh, Cam underscore Illo I L L O 88 on Twitter and uh, CamilloArt.com. You can check them out there. Um, oh. Is there any uh, particular places that people can interact with you other than these? Like, uh, do you have any connections with stores that you want people to go to to um, like buy your work, anything along those lines? Um, there's, a, there's an Australian store here, Days Comics in Canberra. They have a lot of the covers that I've done, like for the indie books I've done, and they have my, they did my Turtles issue 100 cover, so they'll have a few of them. They'll have um, the latest cover I did cancelled for Black Caravan Comics. So yeah, these comics in Canberra would be the one that I'd shout out that has my stuff, yeah. And that's like D-E-E-S? Yeah, D-E-E-S. Okay, yeah. all right, cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely check them out. I was going to try to look for, um, I'm going to start collecting the Do You Poo books. So uh, yeah. th those are pretty fun. And I've seen some yeah. of the cool Ronin covers. And... <laughs> yeah, I did a, I did a Squid, a Squid Games cover for that. Oh, no kidding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just starting my journey on those collections. But um, a lot of the a lot of the artists I've been talking to are like, oh, yeah, I did a poo cover. I'm like, what? I need to find this. So that's, that's <laughs> really fun. But um, I, I want to thank you so much for, for joining us, especially so late at night for you. And, you know, uh, it's, oh, it's been a blast. Me. I probably could have talked more about pizza with you, but um, I, I figured I would spare the audience that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been such a blast. I, I really appreciate it. And, uh, thanks no, for joining us. Thanks for, thanks for having me, man. I appreciate you guys. All right, folks. So what we're going to do, we're going to pause here. So all of our audio listeners, we're going to have our pizza recipe. And uh, everyone watching on YouTube, enjoy a word from our sponsor, Deadly Grounds Coffee. Everyone thinks because you're a zombie, you don't know good coffee. Well, they're wrong. We have very active lifestyles. It's not all wandering the countryside aimlessly or scaring passing motorists. And we all love a good cup of joe. And there's only one brew that gets my seal of approval. Deadly Grounds Coffee is my guilty pleasure. Bold, robust, delicious. It's coffee that can wake the dead. <laughs> With over a dozen different roasts and flavors, Deadly Grounds can satisfy the most finicky of coffee addicts. The aroma is so intoxicating, it brings all of my neighbors out of the woodwork. Deadly Grounds coffee. Coffee to die for and zombie approved. It's good to get a little deadly. Use the front door! Oh, they're so disgusting. It's pizza time. And now in a segment that we call Pizza Time, where we discuss any Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle or pizza-related food, I give you Pizza Time. Today's Pizza Time is called Four Cheese for Four Bros. Makes one 12-inch pizza. Once to snap the turtles out of a bummer mood, Master Splinter brought them a pizza topped with 99 different cheeses. Of course, that did the trick. This isn't that gnarly, but it's a start. Ingredients. Cornmeal for flour for dusting. Two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil plus more for drizzling and greasing. One large garlic clove, pressed or grated. One pound ball pizza dough, homemade or store-bought. Fine sea salt and freshly ground black pepper. One half cup of shredded low moisture mozzarella. One quarter cup of shredded Monterey Jack cheese. One half cup ricotta cheese. Three tablespoons grated Parmesan cheese. One tablespoon chopped fresh parsley leaves. Remember, dudes, you can lighten it up by using whole wheat, whole wheat pizza dough and low-fat mozzarella and ricotta cheese. Instructions. On a baking stone or a steel pizza peel, bake, place your baking stone in the middle rack of the oven and preheat to 500 degrees Fahrenheit for at least 30 minutes. 
dust a pizza peel or an inverted baking sheet with cornmeal or flour. Baking sheet. Preheat the oven to 500 degrees Fahrenheit with a rack in the middle position. Lightly coat a heavy-duty rimmed baking sheet with olive oil. In a small bowl, stir together the olive oil and the garlic. Set aside to marinate for 15 minutes. Step 2. Stretch or roll the dough into a 12-inch disc, then place it on the prepared pizza peel or baking sheet. Step 3. Brush the dough all over with some garlic oil, then making sure to get it all the way to the edges. Step 4. Season with salt and pepper. Scatter the mozzarella and Monterey Jack cheeses. Dot all over with ricotta and sprinkle the Parmesan cheese over the top. Shimmy the dough from the peel to the hot baking stone or transfer the baking sheet to the oven. Step 6. Bake the pizza for 8 to 15 minutes until the crust is golden brown and the cheese is beginning to blister in spots. Step 7. Remove the pizza from the oven, season with a light drizzle of olive oil, and sprinkle with parsley. Let it chill at room temperature for 5 minutes, then slice and serve. This is your pizza time for today. A white pizza. A sauceless pizza. A classic. Four cheese for four bros. Cowabunga, dudes! Thank you for listening to the Epic Tales from the Sewers podcast. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were created by Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird. This podcast has no affiliation with Eastman, Laird, Mirage Studios, IDW Studios, Archie Comics, or Nickelodeon Studios. This podcast is a member of the Dorkening Podcast Network. Check out thedorkening.com for other podcasts. Epic Tales from the Sewers is recorded by Justin Cooper and Eric Will. Greetings! We are the Retro Reductopus Cephala Podcast, the bi-weekly show that celebrates all the things that made growing up awesome. He's right. We wax philosophic about lots of geeky crap like old video games and movies, toys, cartoons. I don't know. Help me out here. Music. Pants. Quoting video games that don't have dialogues. Shabibers. Tasty news. Unnecessarily long Japanese onomatopoeia. Butt breathers. Uncomfortable nature facts. Or how to install a samoplage. And unlike all those other podcasts, we at Retro Octopus have an exciting rotating host schedule. Do we? We sure do. So, if you didn't like the guy flapping his gums this week, like me, worry not, gentle listener. Next week, we'll have a whole new host. A problem. Hey, they might still suck, but they'll suck differently. And you know what's really cool? Retro Octopus is part of the Dorkening and Inebriar Podcast Networks with new episodes every Tentacle Tuesday. Which is like every other Tuesday. We named it. Anyways, you can listen to us at iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, or any podcast player cool enough to carry the only show that celebrates all things that make growing up awesome.